mean so many things to me. It's like daydreaming, a successful feeling, being up in the clouds in the sky. You know, they say the, the, the best lighting in Hollywood is the sun, right? I live in California and um, I agree, but I believe that the best lighting is magic hour, um, you know, sunset, sunrise. Um, just being able to experience it, I'm a very lucky person to be able to travel to many places and being able to experience it in, in, in so many different continents and, and countries and cities inspires me. But at the same time, it all gives me the same type of tranquil, calm mood, you know? When I look at a sunset, especially, or sunrise, because uh, this year, actually, me, Shupe, and Alaya started the year off at the beach watching a sunrise. And when we're in Hawaii, our house has one of the beautifulest sunsets in the world. And the energy it gives off to allow yourself to, I don't know if, if this is for everyone, but it allows myself to really stop everything and just enjoy the moment, especially the last minute of it. I mean, it happens so fast because sometimes you're like sitting there waiting for it, waiting for it, you see the colors change and you kind of get mesmerized by it. And you know, then the sun's about to dip and it's like gone, right? And it's, it's almost like precious, you know, it's, it's, it's very precious and it's also very calming for me. And um, you know, for me as a, I say a creator, it's hard to find moments where my brain isn't moving. Like, you know, even before I sleep, I'm sitting there thinking about things. And to be able to find that kind of peace and tranquility with clouds and with sunset and sunrises is a story that I've never told. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the hike was cool. I mean, we had a good group of people, um, no, no accidents, which is number one, um, important. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think one of the most important things for me is my endorphins, right? And um, getting them however, and getting them in, in different ways. So I love to run. I've run for years now. And recently, um, me and my family, we always go on hikes. And uh, I can tell that my wife and my daughter are in better moods after we go hiking. And they, like I said, they feel successful. They feel like they accomplished a mission. So, um, you know, I feel, I feel good. I feel like we did a good job. I think now, now more and more nowadays, especially since uh, the pandemic, more people are enjoying life for life and um, being able to promote that, especially to the, to the young kids to get up and um, do something with yourself instead of sitting in, in front of a screen um, is also important to me, um, you know, especially as we get older, you know, there's young kids always asking me, hey, what should we do, what should we do? And being able to express that um, through creation is um, very rewarding for me. I always tell people um, everyone needs alone time and I feel like finding that pocket of when you can get it is very important to everyone. Um, I usually choose two or three kind of time periods to kind of get that alone time. Um, so the morning usually is when I try to either get a little walk in or meditate a little. So I think it's important for the soul and the psyche to be able to have no noise, so to speak. Not noise as in like, you know, the, the sounds of nature, but you know, no TV, no one giving you an opinion or, or asking you for, for something. So um, ever since I've had Alaya, um, even though I love every moment with her, um, I kind of striving to find those alone moments. And um, I think starting off the day or ending the day with some of it is very helpful for me. So, you know, it's therapeutical. Um, I don't have a therapist. Um, so nature is my therapist. And uh, I tend to find it very peaceful in the morning, um, especially now that we're in such a modernized world. Um, there's cars, there's, there's so many things that distract you. But in the morning time, um, you kind of get a time out from that. So it's important. I went to Saga um, not so long ago. 
and we had a mountain walk, went to a couple temples, and I saw, um, I don't even know, they said 3,000 year old tree or something. And um, you could feel the energy when you're standing in front of the tree. I could feel the energy when I was standing in front in front of certain mountains as well. It's, it's very hard to explain. It's kind of like an awakening inside of something that you never knew was there. And um, it just, I feel like the older that I get, um, the more I'm attracted to being with nature and outdoors. You know, maybe I'm a little too late to it, but hopefully I can get Alaya to enjoy it earlier. I mean, she's snowboarding, she's five. She wants to camp, she's five. And um, not only Elia, is there's a lot of you know kids that look up to me, and they always you know when they see me they ask me hey what's cool what what are you doing and uh, you know I really feel like being outdoors is cool and finding your own niche and whatever that is um, you know hiking camping you know surfing like you know I consider that outdoor as well snowboarding mountain climbing there's so many different things that you can do so just go out and uh, have fun. I mean, I think exploration is, is challenge. You know, challenging yourself to not stay complacent or not think you're smart enough and to, to really kind of be like, I want to learn something new, you know? And um, no one can know everything. So my mindset is actually exploration. So <laughs> it's like the, the flip of it, right? And I think they mean the same thing, but I definitely think that challenging yourself to you know, surpass yourself. Yeah, I have a competition with myself always. And it's like, how do I do better? How do I do this? Can I snowboard? Oh, well, look, I can, you know? Oh, can I hike this mountain? Let's try, you know? And um, I think that that's the part of, of exploration is, is really seeing new things, allowing yourself to see new things, allowing yourself to experience. You know, I, I see a lot of successful people that say that, you know, they're, they don't want to do this or they don't want to do that because they are good or whatever. And I feel sad for those people because, you know, you know money is one thing, but life is not money. Money is materialistic and, you know, this is all nature and, you know, nature is a gift given to us. And at so many times, even like when I was younger, we choose to ignore that gift. And, um, you know, being able to explore out in Japan, in Hong Kong even, in America, in Los Angeles, in Hawaii. It's one of the things that I really look forward to nowadays. Um, you know, when we plan a trip, we always say, hey, where are we going to go? And it's not like, where are we going to shop or where are we going to eat? It's like, hey, where should we go outdoors that will inspire us? And it's not like I go to go outdoors to inspire myself for this project. I just go and be natural with it and the inspiration kind of just comes, like how this North Face thing came. I mean, I never knew I was going to do a North Face capsule, but inadvertently being outdoors and then being inspired by it led to the creation of the North Face capsule. So, you know, definitely explore more and um, definitely learn more. You know, ever since I've been into fashion, North Face has always been a staple for me. Um, you know, fashion first, which is strange because um, definitely they're a technical outdoor company. Fashion orientated, a lot of my friends have collabed with them. In the recent few years, you know, I've been uh, living outdoors a little bit more, outdoor life with my family and my friends. Um, and um, North Face has given a different meaning to me, which is, my go-to when I go outdoors to do outdoor activities. Um, so being able to work with North Face was something that was, you know, a, I would say a dream, asp an aspiration of mine. So to be able to really dive in and really conceptualize something with them was exciting for me. Uh, it was a challenge and um, really rewarding. So, you know, trying to figure out what me and my team could do um, on a North Face canvas was, really exciting for us. Yeah, I mean, the Nupsy jacket obviously is a staple. I mean, everywhere, you know, everywhere you go, you go to hip hop, you go to fashion, and you go to real outdoor people, and North Face is always there. I'm born in Vancouver, 
So um, when I was young, my sister would always go snowboarding and camping and I'd always be like, no, I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to go. But, um, you know, as I grew older, I kind of understood the values of what it brings to you. Um, but definitely the Nupsy jacket is something that's iconic. I feel like, um, you know, it's like it's like a white canvas, you know, um, it can be simple. It can be wild. Um, it can be toned down. And you can kind of wear it with anything nowadays, I feel, you know, whereas before, in my opinion, you know, when I was younger, when I would see a jacket similar to the Nupsy jacket, it would be like, it's cold, it's super cold. But now, um, you know, with so many of my friends and my, my collaborators uh, working on North Face, it, it gave kind of new meaning to the jacket to me and just new meaning to the brand. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of iconic things within the North Face ecosystem other than the Nupsy jacket as well. So, you know, i um, just happy to be able to explore and create um, with those tools. I think a collaboration definitely has to be a 50-50 split, right? Um, you know, it's, it's never, it should never be one person is overpowering the other, right? So obviously, um, it took us 20 years <laughs> to get to work with Claude. So, you know, we've graduated in a sense, you know, and I'm very happy um, to be able to collaborate with, with the North Face. But I definitely think that it has to be a clash of two ideas and two, I'd say cultures, right? You know, we have a Claude culture. There's a North Face culture. And how do we find the, the medium, right? You know, um, the intersecting point, so-called, right? And um, I think that that's what's inspiring for me. And that's what we look for in a collaborative partner, you know, um, being able to express freely within their language is something that is fun. And, um, you know, like I said, I've been a fan for a while now. I mean, I've done a 360, man, like, you know, 180 or whatever you call it, a complete turnaround. You know, the core person that I am is, hasn't really changed but my curiosities have. What gives me a successful feeling has. So, you know, growing is natural. Um, you know, I, I embrace growth. I embrace getting older with time, you know? You know, fine, like wine, <laughs> it, with time it becomes fine wine. It has a new meaning to me too. Growth is, is watching Alaya grow and just trying to value every day like it's precious um which is why the sunset and and those things mean so much to me because it reminds you of that preciousness of that moment because in the busy life that we all live in not just me it's hard to find that it's easy to just keep adding gas and keep going and keep going but sometimes getting lost is fun you know sometimes sitting and spacing out is cool and um you know, growing has allowed me to enjoy the finer things in life other than chasing a hustle or trying to prove I'm number one or whatever. Um, my whole mindset has totally changed and um, growth is natural and growth should be welcomed instead of um, kind of feared or misjudged. Yeah, I mean, you know, like if, if it weren't for Aliyah, I wouldn't have went snowboarding. I wouldn't have been surfing. I wouldn't have done a lot of things. Um, so, you know, I always tell her to keep an open mind and inadvertently it's kind of telling myself to keep an open mind. Being a father is, is really my focus right now, um, much more than anything else. But at the same time, being a father has inspired me in so many different ways in my work life, how I approach projects, you know, what inspiration means to me, where my creation should come. And watching her create is also a very big inspiration for me. So um, being a dad is amazing, you know. Um, I wish I was a dad earlier in my life somehow now. I think via Alaya and seeing her learn and be so eager to, to see new things, has also changed my mind about a lot of things and changed my perspective. There comes a time when when 
you have to think of the future and not only is the future include you, it includes many other people. Uh, Shupei and Alaya have definitely opened my eyes to that. So I think I've become a more grounded, sound man. <laughs> Whereas before I had Alaya, I was still a child, even though I was 30 something years old. Like, you know, my, I've, I've matured in a very accelerated way in the past few years. And I have to thank Alaya and Shupei for that. I have a great team. I have a great team all around. Um, so it's like, I trust them fully. Um, so I'm more of the d director um, and not kind of giving, you know, toning down the, 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 the role of a director, but as long as the uh, instructions and inspirations are given well, most of the time, if you work with um, talented people, they can do a better job than maybe if you were doing it yourself. So I have to commend my team and all my all my team members for putting out the effort uh, because it's allowed me to spend lots more time with my family. I sleep at 9 p.m. now, 10 p.m. Like 10 p.m. is like so late for me. And you know, when I'm in, in America, 10 p.m. is 1 p.m. Uh, in Hong Kong. So I don't really have that much time to speak to my staff nowadays, but you know, when we do have our group meetings or when we do have those kind of breakdowns of projects, um, they're very attentive and, and, and I'm just blessed to have them around me um, through the good and the bad times and the fun and the non-fun times. But I don't really set like, oh, okay, eight hours I'm gonna do this and then four hours I'm gonna do this. Um, I think that works for some people, but for me, when I get too much of into a schedule, I get bored and then I start fraying from it and then that means I've failed. So I try to be really natural with my time, and um, but I put my family first, definitely now. So, you know, I wake up, make breakfast, make lunch for Alaya, bring her to school. Um, when I can't pick her up, I'll pick her up and, you know, play with her after. And, you know, all of a sudden it's 8 p.m. I think family first is, is my motto right now, but like I said, having that foundation has given me a new perspective to create. And um, lastly, again, like my team is everything to me. I see retirement. <laughs> uh. No, I mean, yeah, I'm very happy that uh, 20, you know, like we've, we've made it this far. I mean, you know, when we started Clot, a lot of people thought that it was a hobby or thought that it was a fad and 20 years isn't a fad. I mean, for a brand to, from a mom and pop's brand to, to, to last 20 years and still thrive is, is something in itself already, I feel. So I feel like we've already accomplished a lot, but there's still a lot more that we can do and working with new partners like North Face has definitely given us a new breath of fresh air. You know, I, I see myself taking more and more of a backseat and not really being in the front so much. Um, I love to nurture new designers, um, pass them my knowledge, um, kind of coach them, mentor them. You know, I've had great mentors myself that meant a lot to me. You know, I think for Clot, especially this 20th year anniversary is gonna be full of surprises and fun like this capsule, but we have so many, so many projects coming and uh, hopefully our fans keep supporting us and we'll get to 25 and we'll get to 30, then we'll get to 50. <laughs> Clot is like kind of my first baby. Obviously it's not a baby, but it's something that I've grown and nurtured for 20 years, so it means a lot to me. I'm not trying to think too far into the future. Um, I like to take things day by day. Hopefully we'll be making new and exciting projects and products for people to enjoy um, all over the world. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, every time anyone asks me this, I just tell the, the, the kids out there to believe in themselves, you know, believe them in themselves as a default and being careful of what inspiration and what copying means. Really uh, understanding what you have to bring to the world because everyone is different. 
some people might be like, oh, this person's cool, this was, but everyone has a cool factor inside them. Figuring out what that is, nurturing that talent, nurturing that highlight, and presenting it to the world, you know? And I, and I think the thing is, be yourself, don't be afraid. And if you fall, pick yourself back up and keep trying. And um, there's nothing more fun in the world than chasing your dream, right? It's being complacent and settling is when life starts to become boring, right? So I'm still chasing a dream and I'm 42 and um, I'm loving every minute of it. So, you know, young or old, you know, believe in yourself and, and go for it. Elias soon will be ready to go camping. Um, we've kind of pretend camped in my backyard <laughs> and uh, she loves it. She has a tent that she always makes everywhere we go. So I feel like she's warming up to the fact and she's gone snowboarding so she understands um, kind of being out and cold because we live in Los Angeles and she's very lucky to have the sun always. But you know, California is a great place to, to, to camp. So um, I'm looking forward to this spring and summer being able to go and do that and uh, do it wearing the North Face clock. <laughs>